talking about one of the greatest treasures, one of the greatest gifts that we have in the world, wild Pacific salmon. And the diversity and numbers that are found coastwide here in, in the west coast of Canada and the United States. It is a treasure for the world that we are charged with protecting. And it is through efforts such as the FAST that we want to bring attention to what we see as the primary impact on our salmon stocks. Opponents of open net salmon farming on BC's coast recently fasted to raise awareness about the issue during the Vancouver Winter Olympics. Over 90% of BC's salmon farms are Norwegian owned and given the enormous popularity of the games in Norway, this is as good an opportunity as ever to reach out to the Norwegian public. The Olympics is a perfect time. It's a useful vehicle to get our message across that Norwegian companies are killing wild salmon in British Columbia. 92% of the farms are controlled by three Norwegian companies and we're here to tell the industry and to tell the King of Norway and the Norwegian government to, to clean up or clear out of uh, Canada. Over the last 12 months, Norway is in a, is in a sea lice crisis. Uh, they've got chemical resistance to sea lice. The chemicals aren't killing the sea lice. Now as people realize that the operations of these Norwegian companies in Chile and Canada in particular are bringing uh, international disrepute on Norway, uh, the public opinion in Norway is shifting against the industry. About half of the 45 participants observed the fast at the Vancouver office of the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, while others joined in via Facebook from around BC and the world. The event was organized by the Muskomog Sawadinik First Nations of the Broughton Archipelago. They chose to fast for 29 hours, one hour for every salmon farm tenure in their traditional territory, which has been heavily impacted by the industry, from sea lice and escaped Atlantic salmon to chemicals and waste that have decimated their shellfish. To my knowledge, I know there's been studies done about the, the effects and damages that they've been doing, and, and nothing's been done. And I think for it to come from another country even is a little bit of a more of a slap in the face than if it was a Canadian company. Like, just seems like an utter disrespect for who we are as Aboriginal people. Especially to the Muskmuk, I think um, we're really spiritual people and we believe in the connection of all things. And if our salmon continue to deplete, it's, it's shaking the foundation of who we are. When the fish goes, where the bear is going to eat, you know, and so on and so forth, the, the fish is a major provider of our food and our, our traditional food today. So once that starts going, like it already has, due to like big impacts on fish farms and whatnot, once it starts killing off, everything else starts dying along with it. What would you like to see happen with these farms on the coast? To be moved, be gone. They made good use of their time together, sharing songs and knowledge while reaching out to citizens and the media through Facebook and other tools. Then I posted up the letter that our tribal council sent to the King of Norway and lo and behold the media in Norway got a hold of it and um, I now have about 30 friends from Norway that have added me as a result of uh, the exposure that's occurred over there. What I'm doing here on Facebook right now is reaching out to uh, friends and uh, connections. It's nice to hear, for example, people from Norway, they're saying that they're, uh, they're with us. They're standing with us. They're telling us all the way from Norway through Facebook that they're having the same problems in Norway as we're having here in British Columbia. As we, uh, we mark the, the ending of the 29 hour fast, uh, I think it's very important to acknowledge everyone that has participated here at the Union of BC Indian Chiefs office. And I know that it has not been easy uh, for 29 hours without food. Uh, but as my brother Quinn Montala Gilis has just said to me, uh, imagine going life without salmon. And that really brings that point home about what it is that we're doing here today. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Coast Salish territory and the Coast Salish people namely the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. And I would like to say it's been a, a great honor to, to host this gathering and more importantly, what it represents. The Union of BC Indian Chiefs is on record as opposing the BC salmon uh, farm fishing industry for well over a decade. Without question that what happened here in the last 29 hours was an important part of the story of the struggle to save our wild salmon stocks here in British Columbia. I want to 
truly acknowledge everyone that has participated in this fast, both here at the Union of BC Indian Chiefs and in places such as Victoria, Courtney, Bowser, Campbell River, Sointula, Quadra Island, Kinkum Inlet, Port Hardy. We have in excess of 40 people that have had observed the fast for 29 hours. And I'm so happy to know that there are people that are willing to stand up in a very peaceful, non-violent way to get our message out to the world. What we have when we look at the river systems that are here, these river systems have provided sustenance for the Muskomog Zaurian of people since time immemorial. It is these rivers that we have built a very rich and diverse culture upon. When I think of the protection that Norway has for the National Salmon Fjords, I just simply ask the Norwegian companies to come and respect our National Salmon Fjords. The initiative achieved its objective, drawing good coverage in the Norwegian media this week. I come from <coughs> Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation from the Sami department. Hmm. And uh, I know that uh, you've been uh, writing a letter to uh, our king. Mm -hmm. What would you have wanted to say to, say to him? if you had met him here in Vancouver? If I had the chance to speak with the King Harold V of Norway, I would, I would love to just sit down and, and share some wild salmon with him, to share a meal. And this is the way of our people, that we host people. And I would want to express to him so he could understand um, what are the issues that we see for our territory. In the end, the sacrifice was rewarded with a wild salmon meal to break the fast. The fast seemed to re-energize its participants for what promises to be a momentous year for this issue and a truly vital one for BC's wild salmon. Oh, 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 oh.